What's up, Weekend Warriors, and welcome back to Sunday Night Stream. And I am joined, finally, with uh, one of our former hosts, and still a prominent host on the dojo, Proton Reviews and Fan Edits. What's up, fams? I'm back. Um, we invited Golden Fighter. Tonight, we're having some trouble getting him on, but uh, we're hoping he gets on later. Go on, Kenny. All right. So tonight we'll be talking about um, music. Yes, we are. Of music. Specifically, the ways that we have played and recorded music um, that others have the way we have listened to and recorded music that others have played. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the earliest I know that I'm familiar with and I actually kind of a fan of is, um, like, are you familiar with the Harlem Renaissance? Um, I can't say, I believe I've heard it mentioned, but I'm, I'm not certain it's, that I know. Um, you know, um, Louis Armstrong, Oh, okay, that's what you mean. Yes. When a lot of um, African-American were starting to express through art, and you got, like, the jazz, jazz age emerging. Yep, that's about when uh, vinyls were at their peak. Um, yes. Or records, if you're, you know, depending on where you live, vinyls, records, it's all the mm -hmm. same thing. Um, and that's about the same time. I want to talk about a little bit earlier before that, because before we had records and tapes, like reel to reels, what we had were essentially a wax cylinder, which anyone who knows about Thomas Edison knows that he associates, that he is associated with the invention of the wax cylinder. <laughs> but what people don't know is that there was also an alternative to tape. Now, it was actually wire. They would take a spool of wire, and they would wrap it around a player, and this playhead would imbue a magnetic charge onto this wire as it went along, and it would play. And tape works on the same principle. After the stream, you're going to have to send me some of this stuff, because I'm actually intrigued now. Um, now... Obviously, at the same time, what we use to record music is different than what we get today. Um, today, we've got all these fancy digital microphones with... Ah, okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry we couldn't get you on, Golden Fighter. Um, you know, they've got these... It's okay, man. I, I'm covering for you. Oh, I got you. We have these uh, fancy digital uh, microphones and whatnot. Everything with like a graphite core and, you know, some kind of carbon core. Well, what they had back then instead of that was uh, quartz. Uh -huh. they, there was just a little copper container with a big old chunk of quartz in there. And an electrical charge would be running through it. And as you spoke to the quartz, it would vary with the way it was fluctuating. Ah, uh, hi, Entertainer's Warehouse. Now, I do have a question for you. How, did, how were these things able to record your voice back then? And able well, to store that information? You see, electricity did exist at the time of the wax cylinder and the wire recording. Mm -hmm. um, and really all a microphone does is it alternates um, electric current based on outside stimulus. So okay. when you run electricity through quartz, it vibrates at a constant rate, which would create that sort of a... that you heard in old-timey vinyls and whatnot. Now, when you spoke at the quartz, you interrupted its normal vibration pattern. And so that caused the electricity going through it to fluctuate. And those fluctuations would sound, once played through a speaker, just like you were, just like you were saying it into the quartz. Ah, okay. And actually, guitars work on the same principle. Uh, give me just a second. Yeah, show me. Now, for those of you not really uh, – or not much in the know about what parts of guitars are what, stop that. Um, <laughs> these bits here are called pickups. Specifically, these are humbucker pickups, meaning they are double-coiled. 
see for each of these little ovals, there's a coil of wire in there. And there are these little magnetic pins that go down in. Now, each of these pins sits underneath a string. They're electromagnets. So when a charge goes in, it plays a stable sound, pretty much nothing. But then you introduce vibration over the electromagnets, alternating that electrical flow, and something like that nasty note would be played. Um, so really, all that sound media is in its physical form is the translation of vibration uh -huh. to electrical fluctuation to sound. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Uh, hi, Entertainers Warehouse. Uh, huh? Uh, so, essentially, what that's brought to us is the physical form of media. Now, after the wax cylinder and wire, we got records, and pretty quickly afterwards, reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape. Now, it was not great tape, it was essentially very... Oh, uh, Entertainers Warehouse, we are talking about the, uh, the history of physical music media. Mm -hmm. um, so, it was essentially what would today be considered type 1 ferric tape, meaning it was ferromagnetic. Okay. Uh, so, like with the wire, this tape would go past what this little magnetic... Uh, or this little tiny electromagnet called uh, a head. And when you were recording, it would have to go past a specific kind of head called a record head. And that would shoot a little electromagnetic charge into the tape as it went by. And that, that little electromagnetic charge, depending on, uh, would essentially just be the electric fluctuations of what was uh, coming from the microphone. So essentially, you were saving an electric signal for later to be played again. Uh, it's all just vibration, really. Now, okay. this, now, even though the technology remained the same for a while, people realized that this was kind of bulk and hard to deal with. So they started experimenting, and they started creating cassettes for these tapes. Oh, yes, um, cassettes. Well, the first ones were about that big. Keep in mind, oh, real yeah, to real I've, tapes I've seen some come that on big. like I know what you're talking about. Yeah, real to real tapes come on like a big old honking thing like this. So this mm -hmm. seemed a little more seemed a little more compact and protected the tape. Okay. Um. So now I want to get. Go ahead. I'd like to get into um vinyl. Ah, vinyl. Now, see, this is something that I think every good music fan has an appreciation for. Now, how vinyl works, back in the day, they didn't have all these soundproof recording studios. And when you got a record, it was more than likely you were going to play it in your home. So the way they got the acoustics for that is really interesting. They would just rent an apartment and they would set up a microphone and a chair in the I'm going to get my charger in the quick. Okay. Can you continue talking? I'm going to get my charger. Okay. okay. So we'll catch him up when he gets back. Uh, but they would set up a microphone and a chair in the corner of the room where more than likely you would uh, find a record player placed. And then the recording equipment would be in a separate room uh, with wire carefully laid out so that it went around the edge of the room into the recording studio where they would cut the first copy of vinyl. Uh, you getting this? I apologize about that. No problem. I was just telling them how uh, the old school records actually had uh, music put on them. So you were able to hear that, right? Do you own any vinyl on you? 
Uh, I do actually. Just one, as I've only just started collecting. Uh, but it is a vintage one. Which one is it? I'll go get it. There we go. Okay. We're going to have to fix that eventually. So, what I have here, I just got it to make sure that the uh, record player on my new stereo worked. Uh, is that an now, original? Yes, this is one of the originals. Was it passed down to you? No, no, no. Uh, there is a store in my uh, about a thirty-minute drive from me that sells all kinds of cool vintage stuff like this, from old records to toys to. Um, How much was it? This was about, I think it was like twenty-five bucks. You got it lucky. Well, a lot of copies of this were made. This is the oh. Charlie Brown Christmas Special Vinyl. Ooh. Yes, and you'll occasionally run into vinyls like this. Actually, you'll run into them quite commonly. You see, the vinyl does not have to be black in order for the needle to read uh, what's on it. That's I don't. It's just black was the easiest to make. It looked the nicest and made it the easiest to tell when there was some guff on the disc. Um. Now, uh, there, vinyls have been in different sizes and types throughout the years. Um, they've gone from being these big honking just discs of death to being something about this size. Then they transferred down to something kind of small. Then they decided they liked the bigger ones because you could keep more uh, sound on them. Um, what I was saying was that uh, they would have actually cut the first record, the master record from which all other copies of that particular record were made. So, like, you know how they didn't have the big soundproof studios back in the day to record in, right? Oh, I know you're talking about. Okay, you cut out for a second. Um, so what they did was they would actually just rent an apartment and they would set up a microphone and a chair in the corner of the room because if you got a record more than likely you were going to play it in your home on your record player which was sort of a communal thing so they just decided well then we'll just make sure they're the acoustics of a house okay and then all the recording equipment would be in the back and there'd just be two light bulbs a red one and a blue one and the blue the red one would be on until uh, the people in the back were ready to start recording, what they would do is they would actually start cutting the vinyl before the band even started. Uh, so there'd be a little loop of dead sound that you could place your needle on so you didn't start in the middle of a song. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if you have a vinyl, you'll notice between that there are these little grooves uh, between the grooves. They're wider and kind of flat. That's just the space in between songs. Okay. So when they were ready for the band to start, they would flick on a switch and the blue light would come on. Um, and then instead of having a needle play the sound, they had a little needle cut the vibrations it was picking up. Because remember how I said it was so uh, sound to vibration to electrical fluctuation to sound again? Yes. Well, you know those little lie detectors that do this? Mm -hmm. as the paper goes by. This is the yes. same idea, except it works with sound. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Now, um... I know we're jumping from subject to subject in this, but since because we got a limited time for tonight, but because we started a little yeah. late. But how about we jump into, um... Let's see, we already did, um, vinyl. How about, um, cassette? Like, the... Tape? Ah, 
Yeah, so tapes originally were on just reels, and this was called reel to reel because you would have a reel to reel player where I don't know, it sounds like I'm saying the word reel a lot, but follow me on this. Mm -hmm. You would take the reel one of your tape and yes. you would set it uh, on this big player and you would grab one end of the film or the sorry, tape because it wasn't really film yet. And, re and get it kind of started by threading it through another wheel and then onto a, a second wheel. Didn't and they this make would, boom boxes for this? It was 80s? kind of a system. And this was before the 80s. This was like 60s. Okay. Yeah, 80s era. Actually, it was, uh, yeah, like six, it was the 60s. The 80s had compact cassettes. And we'll get, to, well, the, uh, the 80s had eight tracks. Eight okay. tracks. Um. Now, an 8-track is a little bit different. You see, originally, uh, they only had four tracks of electromagnetic charge on a tape. Mm -hmm. um, but 8-tracks, that's exactly that. They had that twice over so they could play in stereo. Worked was, instead of, like, it could either play a short amount of music in stereo, or it could continue back around and keep playing because unlike uh, compact cassettes or reel-to-reels where it just goes from one end to the other, eight tracks have an infinite loop of tape. As okay. in, it's like it doesn't end, it just meets. And there's a little metal connector at the end there to tell, uh, to kind of keep it together and to also tell the, uh, cassette player, hey, stop. They, they need to take the 8-track over and flip it over. Now, when did cassette start to transition into CD? Well, actually, that's pretty interesting. You see, before there was CDs, because uh, there were uh, several different forms of record, including laser disc, and it really wasn't anything different than records, except it was played with a laser and looked a bit like a big CD. Right. And CDs are a little bit different because they are a digital media. Um, they've right. essentially just got a little, a continuous line of binary code, like Morse code running through them. Yeah. Now, the cassette thing did catch on and they decided, well, we'll just make it, we'll make what we used to make, but smaller. And they called that the compact cassette. And that's what you and I know. Yeah. Um, now, here's a little bit of an interesting thing. When Now, anyone who's seen A Clockwork Orange has probably seen the micro cassettes at the beginning, where he listens to, Luke, to Beethoven. Yes. Yes, I know what you're talking about. God, that okay. was screwed up. <laughs> yes, it was. Well, you see, the reason for that is because smaller mini cassettes were becoming popular at the time, because they figured, well, if mm -hmm. the at-home media of records has been replaced with this smaller, uh, more compact disc, the CD. Why don't we take compact cassettes and make them smaller? Because they're the portable version. Ultimately, everyone had this, and you know, this didn't catch on. They couldn't store a lot of sound on there. Mm -hmm. And really, it's kind of a shame because CDs sort of kind of washed out cassettes and, uh, because they were portable, they were small. Um, now, so, um, we, did, we, we did want to talk about music we grew up with, right? In these well, mediums. the the yeah, the stuff we grew up with. Um, I was primarily raised on compact cassettes. Mm -hmm. I was raised. I have to say same thing: cassette and CD. We didn't my, actually get a CD player for a while. I grew up oh, on more old school me. stuff, like 80s music and 90s music mediums. So it was mostly either compact cassette or laser disc. I was raised on it all. Mm -hmm. I do uh, remember, like, my grandmother would have a um, vinyl, but that I had a recorder for vinyl, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, I. See, oh, you got a call. Yes. May I come in? Uh, if you can be quiet, yeah. Actually, we got to end pretty quick anyway. Yeah. Uh, 
tell you what, we'll pick this up again another time. Mm -hmm. uh, um, do we want to continue on this next week, or do we want to um, move on to the next subject next week? I would say we'll brush this up at the beginning of whatever we're doing yeah. next week. All right. Well, so next week's going to be anime, guys. Yes. And Kenny here, while he's been on hiatus, has actually been graciously working, uh, graciously working on a schedule for us. So we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I'll have that um, cleared and spot up for our meeting. I'm thinking we'll, we'll have it all cleared and spot up by the end of uh, December. And once we have that spot up, we'll I'll post a video of all the a uh, weekly video. Well, I think that won't be necessary. What we'll just simply do is uh, check the schedule and announce what next week's theme will be that okay. week. Um, so next week will be anime. Thank you all yep. so much for watching. Uh, remember to check us out on Twitter. Uh, it's not been active there lately, but we're going to try to fix that. And with Kenny back, everything's going to be just great. Um, we're going to, of course, keep in mind he probably won't be able to show up regularly as he is going to be a little bit busy with school, just like I've been busy with work, just like uh, Assassin and Fighter are busy with their own stuff. So See, I will definitely be, uh, most likely definitely be for Sunday if my schedule still turns out well. Um, Toku, Shatsu, and um, Bot yeah, and Talk, Bot Talk. They're going to be a little... For, 29, for 2018. Yeah, um, so we're, uh, we will get back to him, guys. Thanks for being patient with us. Mm -hmm. uh, remember to go check out our individual channels. You can find those in the featured channels page and the sidebar uh, on the featured channel sidebar on the dojo uh, channel page. Thanks mm -hmm. again, guys. And as always, we'll see you later, Weekend Warriors. Stay more phenomenal, everybody. <laughs>